Michelle by way of Charlotte a long time I have to answer this. Right? That's my aunt sitting right there, my mom's older sister. She's I haven't seen her a long time. My cousins. I have not seen it since I was what? Something. <laughs> it was real little. Those are my two first cousins, y'all, and I love them dearly. Just because we ain't seen each other, don't mean they ain't been praying for it. Amen. Guys, I was so excited when Michelle told me y'all were coming because she didn't know whether to say something or not, but it's all right. <laughs> y'all are here, so thank you. Y'all, I am so excited about this. This has been such a journey for us. The enemy has been trying in every way that he can to separate us, to divide us, to distract us, but we're not going to allow him to do that. Amen? Amen. 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 So we're gonna, those of you that have your Bibles, you can turn or you can sit, you can stand, you can do what you need to do because we are... Oh my God, y'all, my sister's here. Amen. I didn't even know she was in the place. Amen. The one and only Minister Shirley Brooks is here. Y'all give her a hand. Amen. She stuck in on me. I can't wait to hug you too. Hallelujah. So we're coming from Exodus 3 and 16 at this time. I'm not even going to give you time to get it. I'm going to go ahead because we're we on a time crunch right now. Amen. Amen. Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. Yes. And I have promised to bring you up out of misery in Egypt yes. into the land of the Canaanites, yes. the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. That's a lot of Ike saying. Yes. A land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed towards this people so that when you leave, you will not leave empty-handed. Yeah. How many of you don't want to leave here empty-handed? Yeah. Yeah. The pathway to not leave it empty-handed is you have to ask God to set guard over your mouth. Because yeah. our mouth yeah. sometimes can get us in trouble. Yeah. 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 He keeps watch over the door of my lips. Yeah. That's what Psalms 141 and 3 is. And I need to just keep Guard of my lips sometimes. Amen. Amen. So what I say to you tonight is I don't speak what's on my agenda. I speak what's on the agenda of God. Yes. Someone said to me before that people don't come here sometimes to be preached to. Well then the question is, what are you here for? Yes. Are you here for God or are you here for show? Amen. God says, Are you here for my purpose or are you here for your own? Amen. See, if you did not come to experience God. Clearly, you're in the wrong place. Yes. You might want to reevaluate your position because yes. God is definitely going to be talked about tonight. Yes. God's undisputed and unadulterated word, and only God's undisputed and unadulterated word is destined to come forth in this place at this time. Yes. If you're allergic to the word, I suggest you go get a benefit. Maybe that'll help you get over it. Amen. 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 Women and men of God, you can't let other people's hang ups hold you back from your destiny. See, we make that mistake sometimes. We allow, you've got to give God what he is due. Do y'all know what God asked us to do? Do y'all know? All he asked us to do is praise him. Praise him. Y'all sit here nodding here. Why you ain't praising him? Praise him. what the next man or woman is doing. You have to do this thing for yourself. Stand before God, naked, vulnerable, and completely yes. open to yes. receiving yes. what he has for you. You see, you have to take your five mouth, your lying tongue, yes. your woman, yes. your spirit, Just 
loves every hair on your head. He loves your fingernails, whether they're done or chipped or not. He loves you. The first step to being able to see what God sees is the ability to receive instruction. Amen. Are you teachable? Amen. Are you hungry for God's knowledge? Do you want to learn? Or do you know it all? And struggle with constructive criticism. It's important that when God speaks, that you first listen. And then you write it down sometimes. Because we can't always remember everything. When he tells you that you're not what they said you are. When he tells you his plans for you are greater than your wildest imaginations. You will be prepared to record and bring it back to your remembrance on those dark days. When you find yourself alone. If you bring God's word back to him, he's not a man that he can lie. So all he's going to do is grant you what you're asking for. His word says that if we can ask him for anything, 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 and he will give it to you. You just have to believe. Amen? Amen. See, the second step to God getting us to see what he sees is his, his showing us our destiny. He shows yes, it to Lord. us sometimes. In our travels to transparency, because that's the word that I was given tonight, is transparency. We can't lose hope. See, your surroundings may not match your vision, but you can't give up. We have to be desperate about God. Uh Get to Jesus however we can. If your dream doesn't scare you, then it's not big enough. to me. 
me. All the, 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 oh, I don't even want to think about the physically violent, physical violence in relationships. Bad decision making. I kept choosing the same man over and over again. But my son wouldn't know that. Because he never knew anybody that I dated. Amen. Amen. God keeps fools too, right? Amen. So I just wanted to say that to you because I, I, I was given the word of transparency. And being transparent is all I know how to do right now. Because there might be somebody here that's feeling that same way. There, there might be somebody that sees this that's feeling that same way. And I want you to know that God loves you. And he has a different plan. He had a different plan for my life. Because he didn't allow me to die. When I opened my eyes, I was still in my room. I was like, is this heaven or hell? Where am I at? But I was still home. So, but we are here today. Because he, he touched me. That day started a part of the change in my life. You know, I had heard all my life, there's anointing, there's this, there's that. I'm paying attention to that. Amen. Especially from the people that it was coming from. You just right. cussed me out and called me a name. Right. And you going to tell me I'm anointed. All right. right. Anointed with what? From you? <laughs> no. Uh-huh. So. Be real, baby. <laughs> That's all right. Ooh, God says, do you see what I see? The answer is no. See, we can't see what God sees. Naked, but not ashamed. Let's not talk. Amen. See, the next step to seeing what God sees is we have to be determined in our walk. You see, somebody else's destiny could be rooted in your taking that step forward. Yes. Yes. Somebody else could be waiting to hear what you got to say before they step up or stand up and have the courage to do or say, say what they need to do. Say so that. you have to walk in your destiny uh-huh. because somebody else's life could depend on it. See, when you when you see who you really are, you will become that mighty fortress of God he destined you to be. And it ain't easy. I'm not going to lie. Stand here and lie to you and say it's easy. It's not because once you declare that, that's when all hell gonna break yes, loose. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, you're gonna be a force to be reckoned with. Literally, your stepping on the floor in the morning to start your day will cause the enemy to moan and groan and shake. Amen. Right Amen. 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 See, this ain't about me and quiet as it's kept. It ain't about you either. Amen. Amen. But it's about the will of God manifesting yeah, itself. That's it. See, are your expectations beneath your destiny? Huh? I know mine were. Yeah. See, I put God in this little box. Yeah. He was in there for so long. I didn't trust him to handle things because I could not see what he was seeing. I tried to do everything always in the way. Yes. And then he was like, she ain't going to never sit down. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, I finally got it. Amen. And no matter how hard it is, no matter how many tears I have to cry, uh-huh. I just had a breakdown the day before we was on over here. My husband was like, baby, you all right? Because <laughs> I was driving. He's a little nervous. <laughs> we, just <have> to, <laughs> we just have to be real. Amen. We have to be real. See, Joshua 6, 1 and 2 says, Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because the Israelites, no one, no one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king and and its fighting men. You see, the Israelites, if y'all know the story, y'all know the story, the Israelites were assigned a challenge. They had to take the land of Canaan, the promised land. However, their first obstacle was the city of Jericho, and it was an unconquerable wall around that city. You know, they, they they did the measurements. And it said that the, the wall was 11 feet high and 14 feet wide. Can y'all imagine that? 11 feet high and 14 feet wide. And its top was a smooth slope stone, angling upward at 35 degrees. And at 35 feet where it joined massive stones that towered even higher, it was virtually, virtually impregnable. No man could penetrate this wall. See, the Israelites were faced with this great opposition, and the worst part of it of all was that their vision was skewed. Because you see, yeah. they, could, they couldn't see what was ahead of them. They didn't know what was on the other side of that wall. They had no idea what awaited them, even if by God's grace if this wall was taken down, right? They didn't know what, what to expect. They were instructed to walk around this wall once per day for six days. And during that wall, they couldn't say nothing. Now, all these women in this room... How many of y'all can walk two feet and not say nothing? <laughs> I just told you how big that wall was. They had to walk. 
around this wall. And they couldn't say nothing. Ain't nobody telling them what's going on. They don't know what, what's awaiting them. They don't know what's happening. All they know is they have to walk around this wall. Okay, they walked the first day and then happened. Oh, second day and then happened. They had to do that for six days. Uh-huh. Six days. Now, do we have any real experienced fighters or defenders of oneself in here tonight? Mm-hmm. Anybody know anything about fighting? Amen. Amen. See, now as we fighters in here know, the key to winning any battle is the element of surprise, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Amen. They had to march in silence for six days without even knowing what they were up against. You see, I imagine that mm-hmm. there was question about what was going on in their head, you know, but you know what they did? They marched in silence. They still couldn't see. They couldn't see what was going on. They couldn't see the victory that awaited them on the other side of that wall. How many of you know that just because they couldn't see it doesn't mean it wasn't there? See, man sees the surface, but God sees the substance. Say, neighbor, there's more to me than meets the eye. Tell your other neighbor, neighbor, there's more to me than meets the eye. See, all my my beautiful good looks and my and my hair all done and my and my fingernails painted and all of that kind of stuff. There's more to me. There's substance, not all that vanity. Then came that day of reckoning for them. You see, they had no idea what they what they were marching for. They had no idea what lie on the other side of that wall. It didn't matter though because they had a job to do. How many of you in here tonight have a job to do? So they marched in silence. They couldn't make a sound. They stood before God, vulnerable and completely dependent upon Him. Yes. They had no idea all the good things that lie on the other side of that wall. But they marched and they waited for the signal. The signal to tear down that wall of insecurity, that wall of secret hate for your sister or your brother, Uh that wall of fornication, Uh that wall of lies, Uh that wall of bondage that is in the way of our destiny. Come on, come on, um, Minister of Music, can I get some music, please? (laughs) They continued to march. Yes. For six whole days in silence, this big mountain of wall stood before them, and all they had to fight it was their voice. Uh They had nothing. They had their voice in the trumpet player. Amen. Uh And the music man. Yes. Yes. The music man. Yes. Yes. Amen. From the outside looking in, that seemed impossible. Uh Uh-huh. But how many of you know that God, with God, nothing's impossible? Nothing's impossible. You see, if you know that, those of you who can, I want you to stand up. Amen. Stand up. Stand up. We're going to walk down some of these strongholds tonight. Amen. Walk down. Walk down. That we find ourselves in. Yes, Lord. Let's do it in silence for a minute while we place. I want you to walk around and think about what God has done for you. Don't be scared. We all women in here. We all family. We all God's people. Walk around. If you can't, it's not going to be a good thing. But I want you, you can stand right here in your space and you can still experience him. Just like the rest of us. Amen. He'll meet you where you are. Come on, walk in silence. I hear talking. I need silence. I want you to think about God. Think about all he's done. Think about this year that you had. Think about what might lie ahead of us with the president that we have. Think about the things that may come in your life. Things that you want to happen that haven't happened. Things that God has shown you that you haven't stepped out on. Think about God and all he's done for you. Think about it. Walk. Walk down that fornication. Get that man out your system. Walk down those lies. Walk down that dying spirit, that spirit of giving up. Walk it down. Walk down that spirit of jealousy. Walk it down. And in a minute, I'm going to have the piano player to play this loud noise. Because I want y'all to shout down the walls of Jericho in this place. Shout down those walls that are holding you back from doing what you need to do for God. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to count to three. And on three, I want y'all to shout out to God. 